Welcome to Dino's Garage. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Richbit um, sensor, basically replacing a sensor on the Richbit. This is a, actually a, a top 012 Richbit bike, which is my bike. I've had a problem with the um, what I believe to be the sensor. Now I can't tell you exactly whether or not the sensor is faulty, but I believed it would be faulty as I'm pedalling the motor kicked in and kicked out. So really the only thing to do was to have a look and check that out. Um, what I did do um, from talktech.co.uk and I found this on eBay, um, it's the electric bike KT V6 um, pedal assist sensor or cadence speed sensor. Um, this was literally £11, 25p, including VAT, so really cheap. And I can say that's from talktech.co.uk and I found this on eBay and it was the KT V6. Um, so basically I'll show you with this video how to take the old sensor off, put the new TalkTech sensor on and you'll see from me testing it hopefully that all is well and it, and it works. So let's uh, have a look at the video and hopefully all is good. So this is the other side of the crank and uh, basically this is the, the crank arm. What you want to do is hit the back side of this with the mallet. The reason for taking the, um, the cog off, the large chain set cog off, is obviously so when you come up with the mallet you're not hitting that chain set. Um, so taking the bolt out from here knocking the back side of this crank arm a few times you should shift it obviously use a rubber mallet or something very similar to that so you don't actually damage the back of the crank arm and um, that just knocks it out to there i actually sprayed a bit of wd-40 in here first all penetrating fluid either one of those will be fine it's just to help get that release basically when you hit it so this is the existing sensor and as you can see it has these sort of splined teeth and inside is this rotating bit inside here when you undo these three screws you have the the cable which is basically the pickup inside and then you have this rotating part which is either the magnets or the metal I'm not sure whether the magnets here and these are metal or this is metal and these are the magnets but either way this rotating part basically locates and rotates as you turn the pedals and as you turn the crank those bits turn around and the sensor picks up that rotation which engages the motor engages the um, the electrics in your control unit sends a signal to the motor and then the motor obviously engages and off you go there is something wrong with this sensor this is the original sensor as far as i know for the top 012 um, i yesterday bought off of ebay this new sensor um, cost about 11 pounds so very very cheap uh, again it has these splines these interlock into here and you do need to make sure that you buy a sensor that does have these interlocking splines. The nicer thing actually about this sensor, as opposed to this one, is this one just sort of slides on and kind of locates in here. It doesn't really grip. Maybe that is part of the problem, part of the issue. Whereas this one, not only does it push on and these bits locate, but also these other bits here help it to locate onto this part i'll just show you that um, i don't have anyone pushing on the bike on the other side so obviously i will push this on and then it will locate into those pins and i'll just show you how that sits when i push that on so this is the other sensor just pushed on into place and you can see it's a it's a, it's a nice tight fit on there it fits nice and snug grips nicely there's no sort of wobbling about or anything like that this one did to be honest so that's it in place obviously this crank arm now goes back on and make sure that when you put it on you're obviously putting it on opposite to the opposing crank arm so that will go on like that um, I will tap that back on with my rubber mallet and also put in the bolt and you can just make out this blue here and you might wonder what that is it's a thread locking compound 
kind of like a super glue, not as strong as super glue, but it just locks the threads into place here and stops the bolt from basically sort of working free, working loose all by itself. Used normally on motorbikes and in cars and things like that, um, but obviously they use it here. So look, I say that goes into there, locks the crank arm into place, and that's that done. And then basically what I'm going to do now is take this cable, run it up into the control unit, connect that up, and hopefully this connection just connects straight into it. And if it doesn't, then I've got to mess about a bit, and this is where things get a bit tricky, because I'll have to sort of disconnect this connector off of here, connect wires by, you know, cutting this uh, insulation off, connecting wires together just so the connector can connect but we'll see what this is like and we'll see whether it connects straight up or whether it doesn't I guess that's part of me showing you this whole video just so you guys learn really about you know this particular sensor and whether it works or not it's a good replacement for the original right so here's what I've done I've um, cut the uh, original sensors uh, connector off of here um, unfortunately this is the original sensor connection um, it basically has like a, a male connection and a female the exact same connection on the new sensor was on the wrong end if you know what I mean so on the end of this sensor was the male end and on the end of this sensor was the female end so I've cut the female end off of this wired it into here so at the moment it's just sort of hard wired in and then connected them up initially i had the wires around the wrong way now this is sort of the important bit for any of you guys that want to sort this out for yourselves try and get the focus for you as you can see you have got yellow wire to green wire brown to red black to black so the new sensor is yellow to the old green new sensor brown to the old red the new sensor black to black luckily the blacks are the uh, sort of common denominator so i didn't have to try and figure out three combinations of wires which kind of gets a bit of a nightmare it was just a matter of those two initially i would got it the wrong way around tried it again and it works perfectly um, i've got this on my sort of hydraulic axle stand here just sat underneath the crank it sort of balances nicely on there turned the key and it works so hopefully I've alleviated that now that sensor certainly works I'm going to uh, solder these joints rather than put any sort of connector on there I'm going to solder these joints so they're basically solidly connected um, put a bit of tape on there this is the connection at least I can use just to unclip it because as I say I cut it off of the original um, get all this back in here and pretty much I'm set um, I've got the crank arm back on there initially did it just to test it so that's it it should be sorted now um, I'll film it just to confirm that it works and works absolutely fine but yeah hopefully all is good thanks for watching Dino's Garage